It is loading and people hate this intro. I don't mind because I'm still going to do the intro. All weird and singing, all weird and singing, weird and singing at the beginning. It's going to be super weird at the beginning and I'm going to sing all weird and terrible. I'm going to sing the worst that I possibly can. I can make beeps and boops with my mouth. Yeah. Jazz hands. Spirit fingers. Yeah. It's going to be weird. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Glad to be here on a Wednesday. Pow! Oh, I'm glad you're all here. Who's here? Why don't you let me know if you're here? If you're here, hit the like button, I guess. Is that a thing? I'm supposed to say hit the like button because we're on YouTube. I'm supposed to remind people to like hit buttons on their phone. Hello? Buttons, phones, hitting buttons on the phone. (laughs) You know the beginning is going to be weird. You know the beginning is going to be weird. Sorry, I had to turn my mic down a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I don't want to blow up your earballs. Uh, but let's see. Uh, <laughs> HDJC86 says, Hello, I am joining from the internet. You can be 100% certain I have opinions about things. I like it. <laughs> oh, that's a good sense of, uh, it's a good sense of humor. I like that. Hold on, I forgot to plug in my phone. Hold on a minute. Oh, yeah. Ooh, let's see. Who says Fancy Tail Aquatics says still better than Nickelback? (laughs) If you guys don't know, if you guys don't know why people don't like Nickelback, I want you to look up someday when you're feeling weird. Look up Nickelback, two songs at the same time. If you look up Nickelback and they're... Uh, two songs at the same time. You can find it on YouTube. It's an older video, but it explains exactly why people don't like Nickelback. Um, because I and I would say from a musical standpoint that yes, I fully admit I make stupid songs with my mouth and they are terrible and I get it. That's kind of the point. Um, and I am no successful musician myself, even though I I did go to school for music and stuff like that. I'm not a successful musician. I don't have any fancy songs out there. I get it. So people will be like, oh, you don't even know what you're talking about because you're not successful. Oh, my God. Okay, I get it. But from a musical standpoint, their songs are all the same. That's why people don't like Nickelback is because if you don't like one of their songs... You're not going to like any of their songs because they all the same song. Uh, they have pretty much the same time signature, same chord change progression. The drum fills are almost exactly in the same spot, like almost exactly in the same spot. Um, the chorus and changes and everything are all in line. So if you like if you like the one of their songs, you're going to like all of them. Um but if you don't like their song, you ain't going to like any of them. It's not like they have like some other song over here that you might be into. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's one of those things. You know, it's one of those things. It's one of those deals. What happened here? I can't I can't say that I really like them or dislike them or anything like that. I think I'm I'm pretty much just ambivalent of you know, super pop music, rock music like that. I'm sort of just kind of like, yeah, I heard this song. Okay. So I guess I'm not a fan, but I don't think I like dislike them. You know, they, 
they figured out a uh, they figured out their metric to make a, a couple million dollars, hundred million dollars. I don't know, hundred billion dollars. I don't know how much money they made, but um, you know, they made a ton of money. So I guess that's good. And people like them, you know. Although I, the thing I find to be kind of interesting is that the lead singer like married Avril Lavigne, I think. But I don't really find that part interesting. I think I find the part interesting that people think that Avril Lavigne is an imposter of Avril Lavigne. You know what I mean? I think I th I don't know if anybody's heard that theory. They have a theory that Avril Lavigne somehow died tragically and then there's a somebody took her place to imposter as an as a permanent like a permanent imposter. I don't know. Uh, which I thought was kind of crazy, but I don't know. It might be true. It might be fake. It might be true. I don't know. I don't even know if there's any realism behind it, but they seem to have evidence. <laughs> Let's see. Donald's Fish Five says, Joel, were you at Aquashella? No, I was not at Aquashella. I was here working. I stayed home to work um, to continue building what I would, you know, my end game here is to continue building out the show. Uh, I've been building the studio, um, which is why my back hurts and I'm not sleeping a lot. And you can hear Olivia in the background. We got a new baby, all that stuff. Uh, it was, you know, one of the big reasons was it was going to cost a lot of money to go to Aquashella. Um, it costs a lot of money to go to any convention. So it's not specific to just Aquashella. Um, is that it was going to cost a ton of money. I'd already been to a bunch of conventions, um, especially last year. I went to a lot of conventions. I did a lot of traveling and stuff like that. And, um, it costs a lot of money and that's money that I can, that I use to make YouTube videos with. So, uh, you know, I basically sat down with a spreadsheet, um, you know, got all my receipts for my accountant to like figure out like how much money was spent, how much money went here, there, everywhere, all that kind of stuff. And you know, the reality is like, it costs about, <clears throat> it costs about, it, it costs about two thousand dollars at least on average to go to one of those one of the conventions. You know, with the airfare, food, hotel, um, you know, Uber back and forth to the airport, all that kind of stuff. Um, you guys know I'm sober, so I'm not like out partying while I'm there or anything like that. I know that a lot of people do that. That's not that's not my thing. You know, I did that when I was a kid, and whatever. That story always ends the same way in heartache and sadness. <laughs> uh, so that's not my thing, but it still adds up. You know, I miss days of work, uh, you know, and I also, I miss days of work even just from YouTube, uh, from, you know, producing videos, editing, doing all that kind of stuff. So that included, you know, you throw that in too, that like, um, you know, and there's a ton of people that went to Aquashella, for instance, that were going to film it. Like, um, you know, Jason Wilson's going to be there. Um, you know, Brian's fish tanks was going to be there. Jimmy and Corey were going, um, aqua pros went, f I don't know. Uh, does that what's tanks? He went like a whole bunch of people went, you know, and there's a bunch more too also. So, um, I don't have the whole list here to go, <laughs> uh, but you know, there's a whole bunch of people that were going to document, you know, they're going to document the whole thing and, um, you know, they're going to document the whole thing. They're going to do all that stuff. And, you know, I was like, whatever I was going to film was going to be the same thing, basically. You know what I mean? I was just, I would just end up making the same video that everybody else like the fish tank barn you know thanks for the super chat for the ice cream fun bro i appreciate it um thanks man uh, uh fish tank barn i think m howie nine went mike i think mike howie went as far as i know um but there's a bunch of people that um we're going to be there filming it and it's like i don't know what i was going to be bringing to the table realistically um so that 
just was going to be kind of lacking, you know, lackluster as far as like my coverage. It's like, you know, how many cameras can I bring or any of that kind of stu stuff? Um, you know, and if I think about it, it's like if I was going to spend two thousand dollars to go do that and there was going to be a whole bunch of people there already to film it, it's like I don't need to film it. Um, you know, so if you know, I don't, I don't need to film the thing because a bunch of other people are going to film it, a bunch of other, you know, YouTube personalities and all that kind of stuff are going to be there. Um, so I, I felt like it was all kind of handled for the fans. I think the fans could only do so much when they were there. Um, I did notice that they had, uh, a, a lot of success. It looked super successful. Like people had uh, a lot of fun and they're, uh, I think they sold out even. So that's awesome. You know, I'll be showing up at some, uh, I'll be showing up at some uh, events starting uh, with the AGA. That'll be in a month. So uh, I'll be at the Aquatic Gardeners Association, the convention. I'll be there for like three days. So the tickets are apparently sold out to the AGA. Now, the, the thing about that is that I think people are like, oh, man, the tickets are sold out. So the tickets are sold out for the speaking events, the dinner on Saturday, um, the aquascaping classes, that kind of stuff. Cause those are pretty small rooms and whatnot. Um, but the vendor, um, portion of it I, apparently is going to be open to, you know, just kind of whoever's coming, I guess. I don't really know how it's going to work. I just got a, a little rundown of it yesterday, just a short little rundown. So, uh, it sounds like it'll be open to the public for people to just come. Um, and I don't know if you need tickets. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't really know about exactly the logistics, but I'll be at that. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I do hope to try and do, uh, some kind of international trip this year, but from what I understand, like, uh, we were going to try and do an international trip with, uh, Chris Luke up from Dennerlay. Uh, but I don't have a clue what is happening with that. So I was really hoping that we'd be able to, um, you know, try to get out west, west, I'll go all the way west until we end up in the east, right? Is that how that works? <laughs> um, you know, if you go, if you just keep going west, eventually you end up in the east, you know, I was hoping to try and, uh, you know, China or Hong Kong or something like that or whatever. And, um, also I think I'm going to try and do a short Florida trip this year. Um, I'm going to try to go down to Florida, visit some of the farms, hopefully film some fish rooms and stuff like that down there. Uh, but I think that's basically going to be it this year. Uh, you know, some of the money I'm saving from, you know, avoiding some of the, tra the travel and stuff like that is, uh, it's going into the, uh, the new studio, which. I'm going to, you know, as the future comes along, I'm going to always try to have some kind of guest on the show. We'll see how well I can do that. Um, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how well that's going to work out moving forward, but we'll see how it goes. Like hopefully with the new studio, I can just always have somebody over, um, to be on the show. So we'll see if we can do that. Um, then, you know, uh, things are just progressing and whatnot. As I, uh, as I mentioned on, uh, Patreon the other day and, and on the show here, you know, one of the things the that's in my head right now is hopefully opening a maker space at some point. Um, you know, where I think a maker space is kind of the best way to put it, but, um, you know, a fish tank maker space that would be able to have aquascaped aquariums in it to be able to do filming and, um, you know, have, fans and stuff like that come to it probably do some aquascaping classes and little events like a barbecue here and there and that kind of stuff um that is in the works that is in my mind right now because you know one of the things you know we were, we were talking about money earlier um and that's obviously the budget is just a hundred percent the concern it's like you know i think everybody would be doing all sorts of crazy projects if it wasn't you know, if it wasn't because of funding was in the way, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, who wouldn't just be building a rocket ship? Like, I'm going to fly to Mars, bros, you know, but, oh, that costs $10 billion. I can't. 
Oh, man, I can't be a space traveler. Oh, no, it costs too much money. Um, you know, so, you know, because I was talking about that a little bit, you know, it's like trying to come up with the funding and stuff. And then also thinking about it, you know, um, I, I basically went through and did some uh, some spreadsheet work also with breaking down the budget on the possibility of building a building here on the property. Now, I know how much that's going to cost, and I don't need to tell you guys the amount of money, but the thing that I would like to convey is that let's say I did that. Like, let's say that I built a building here on the property. How much would that cost? That would essentially be the equivalent of three to four years worth of rent at a separate place with utilities, uh, triple net, <laughs> uh, insurance, the bond occupancy, all that stuff. Um, and I don't think that that's a good use of money for, you know, the fans, for people who are interested, for people who would want to come to a thing. Um, you know, I don't have a plan on opening any kind of retail space per se, but you know, just thinking about, oh, it'd be like 40 or $50,000 to build a building here. Forty or fifty thousand dollars would go a long way on renting a space, um, building out, and doing all that kind of stuff. It so you could kind of see my thought process a little bit uh, to make it a little bit transparent to you guys that like spending all of that money and meaning that like oh we have to go through the building process. You know we're gonna have to pour a slab. We're gonna have to pour. You know I'm gonna have to um, you know. I'm going to have to cut into the, uh, to the plumbing. I'm going to have to run water. I'm going to have to run sewer. I'm going to have to get it all approved, go through the permitting process. Um, I can pull the power out there, you know, pour the slab down, then build the building, then insulate the building, then start building stands, then start putting tanks in it, then start doing this and start doing that. You see what I'm saying? Like you just, there just be this crazy long list. Whereas I honestly think like if I, if, I could find a place that was in the budget and it made sense. I could probably pull the trigger on it and get it open in a tenth of the time. Like, let's say it would take a year to build a building. We could probably get it done in a month. Get tanks in there, have it open, start doing stuff, you know. Um, so that that's kind of where I'm at in my headspace. And also, um, let's say we... Uh, <laughs> Caroline Epler says, or paying off your house, not even close, not even close to paying off this house. I, you know, one of those things that I would remind people that, um, I live in one of the most expensive parts, uh, essentially of the world, you know, um, I live in Western Washington, which is close to Seattle, uh, in the United States. And it's one of the most expensive places to live in the United States. So, Yes, are there more expensive places in England or Australia? I don't know. Yes, I'm sure there are, but I'm sure they're very comparable. So, uh, fifty grand wouldn't even pay off our house. Um, our house was is a pretty modest. It's a hundred year old house, um, d definitely used and abused <laughs> old house, um, and it was too. It was over two hundred thousand dollars to buy this house. So, uh, gone mad just gives a big thumbs down. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I don't know why Eric's mad, I guess about something. Uh, Joshua Kelly says in a nickelback voice, look at the super chat. I'm trying to think of like, how does that, um, how does a nickelback song go? It's like, couldn't cut it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Right. Something like that. And this is my super chat. Da 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 da. The worst drum fill ever, by the way. Uh, ugh, that's mind-bendingly bad. But Caroline Epler with a twenty-five dollar super chat, six hundred neons done right fund. Oh man. <laughs> I wonder if I could. I wonder how much uh, six hundred neons would cost at wholesale. I wonder. I'll find out. I'll find out if that's something I could do at some point. Um, although I did see that Alex from Tank Tested posted a really cool short video um, 
about a bunch of neons in that circular tank from Aquashella. And that was really cool. That's kind of like one of the one of the things that I saw from Aquashella is like, oh man, I wish I could have filmed that. That looks dope. Like, ah, and he set up a time lapse. So mad props to Alex, man. Like, dude, awesome dude, and awesome shots like that. Like when I click in on a fish tank video, I want to see some some wild stuff like that. Uh, Ray Delalio, Ray Delalio says, try owning a house in Jersey. It costs way more. Uh, I, so our house was, uh, $200,000. I technically live in Tacoma, which is actually 35 miles South of Seattle. So we basically had to move 35 miles away from where we lived in Seattle to be able to afford a house. So Yeah. Almost, well, what if it's like 38 miles or something? I don't know. It's almost, let's call it 38 miles. 38 miles south uh, of the city that we lived in. We lived in West Seattle, which is not technically Seattle proper, but it is a Seattle portion. It's a portion of Seattle. It's just right across the little part there. Um, you know, so we we had to move 38 miles in order to afford it. Which I think you know, had we moved more south, we might have um, we might have gone to a cheaper area. But then all of a sudden we hit Olympia, and then it gets a little more expensive for a little bit, and then whatnot. I don't know. I think I kind of just want to move to the moon where it's affordable. I think the the retail price or um, real estate prices on the moon seem to be reasonable at this point. But um, the house that we moved out of in West Seattle was a dumpster fire it was terrible house it was it had so many problems um and they had to sell it buyer purchase as is okay that that's how they sold it they sold it you don't even they sold it basically under the pretense like you don't even talk to the owners you don't talk to anybody you just give us money and then you own this property um it wasn't even like, could you fix the lights? Could you check and make sure that this thing is subdividable? Any of that kind of stuff. Um, I basically cleaned it <laughs> and said, you buy it like this. So uh, I know for a fact that house was uh, hand built during World War II. I met the guy who built it. And from crawling around all over the place in that house... Um, I know that that house had a ton of problems and there's probably no way an inspector would have signed off on it. Uh, but they sold it cash as is for $550,000. You could have technically lived in there. You know what I'm saying? Like you could live in there. I lived in there. It was fine. Um, but it was not a nice house. There was nothing fancy about it. It was not. And like I said, I don't think the inspector would have signed off on it. Like, it was just weird electrical work in there that didn't make any sense. Um, there was a weird, there was this weird, uh, there was a weird like re water retention area down in the basement area. Like it was just underneath the house, like a hand dug with cement blocks area down there that would drain back up above and then it would seep down through the groundwater and probably just the same water was just being pumped out all the time um it was just nonsense like there's just really no way unless somebody was just doing no inspection or a cash sale like there's no way it would have passed like if, it, if the city had gotten in, in there and looked around or anything like that it probably would have never even been cool um Alyssa bentley says it was one of those this is half on a cliff kind of pieces of land so you don't have to <laughs> so you don't have to build a home very create or you'd have to build a home very creatively to live there safely. Uh, although it would probably just fall off of the, it probably would just fall off a cliff. Uh, JH Aquatics says that tank was from the fish gallery in Dallas, Texas. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you guys went to Aquashella and you guys got to see that tank. I don't know, but it's in a store. So that gives me, a little bit of hope to maybe go down there and get my own time lapse shots of it. Maybe they'll let me uh, time. Did I, did I say time lapse? Time, time lapse. Well, that's a weird word like road, road. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. 54 Punchy is back. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that uh, the gallbladder extravaganza has has wound down. Um, 54 Punchy had some gallbladder action. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're doing much better. And uh, she had to go back in for a second surgery. It was my understanding. I might be 100% wrong. I've only been able to get really passive information as to what happened but um same kind of deal with our sitter which i'm happy to say we have a new sitter now um our other sitter moved to texas and i do have to say arrivederci because uh i don't know i heard secondhand some nonsense that was being told about what i was requiring as her to watch our i don't know very weird stuff so Happy to be uh, done with that and uh, glad to like, see you later. Have fun in Texas. All good, right? No bad feelings or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we have a new sitter here, Lisa, who's helping out, um, who's going to be able to uh, cover for uh, Samantha while she is in her gallbladder situation. Seems like the gallbladder stuff is going around. So take it easy out there, guys. Get some kale. Uh, you know, I don't know, get some kale or something. And I, I just feel like kale's the answer. I don't know. It's probably not, has nothing to do with anything, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Get some kale, get a something health points. I don't know. Health, health points are good, right? Uh, tech turtle is self-promoting a new video up by Saturday. I'm going to my sister-in-law's to set up a 10 gallon with some fry going to film it all i think i'm making a vlog out of it okay sounds like something that people would do on the internet i don't know uh al Gen Geneco. <laughs> jane co <laughs> I always, I'm sure I always say it wrong. Sorry. Uh, we're moving to Indiana. The house I pay uh, 8000 a year in tax. I will be paying 1500 for a house two times the size. Can't wait. I hear there's some good spots in Indiana. I hear, I hear good things about Indiana from time to time. And it has been a long time since I've been out there. I should definitely get... Uh, I should try to get out to Indiana one of these days. Uh, Caroline Appler says, kale chips, yum. Yes, I used to make kale chips every day, fresh. I used to run a, uh, used to run a small cafe down in the Soto district of Seattle. Uh, right down near the stadiums down there. And, uh, you know, had a lovely clientele of mostly... I would say mostly... Probably... 70% sort of middle-aged professional women, you know, and they loved the kale chips I made. So um, they liked that action, and I thought it was pretty cool, but just made fresh stuff for them every day like that. And I kind of like making kale chips. It's fun. Uh, 54 Punchy with a $5 super chat. has a seven-hour gallbladder surgery followed by a week in two different hospitals and another surgery to remove stones from the liver. Fun times. Oh my gosh. That is uh that is intense. That is a lot of surgeries and stuff like that. I am glad to hear you're doing well. 54 Punchy is um a very important integral part to what I would consider this project here is this show. 54 Punchy's been here. She keep me she keep me company on the stream days that no one else was here. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you understand the impl implications of what I'm saying? You know, it would just be me and 54 Punchy here just chatting it out all alone. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it up we try. Right? Is that how that goes? Man, I was listening to that song the other day. Talented. Talented. That's some good stuff. Oddball Aquatics is here. It says, uh, haven't made it to a live stream in forever. Hey, y'all, and hi, Joel. How's it all going? It's all going pretty well, I think. Uh, things got exciting for a minute, and then they mellowed out, and I'm sure they'll get exciting again. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a natural ebb and flow of life. 
And uh, I think we're all happy with that. Janeco. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Janeco. Echo. Echo. I like it. Okay. Uh, Kathy B says, move to Colorado and inhale yourself to Nirvana. <laughs> um, I am happy to say that I really like Colorado. I really enjoy Colorado. Um, I really do. And uh, Vicky and I were actually down there. We went to go look at some properties and uh, potential about relocating to Colorado. I think uh, not last summer, but the summer before. We were actually driving around down there and having a good uh, having a good time, checking out some stuff. And I'll tell you, some of the properties we liked were just out of the price range. And I think the ones that were in the price range were kind of like, eh, that's not the greatest. Like, I don't want to live right next to the freeway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, we just didn't find anything perfect out there. Uh, we definitely have found some good stuff in uh, Wyoming and Idaho, though. So, you know, maybe someday. Maybe someday we'll relocate there. I don't know. We seem to be considering some of the possibilities. I think we're probably going to stay in Idaho for another – or uh, Idaho – in Tacoma for another year, uh, mainly because Olivia, if you guys, you know – Having heard me talk, you know, tell you're blue in the face uh, about Olivia, uh, my new daughter, our new daughter. We had a daughter, baby one. Um, if you haven't heard me talk about her a lot, prepare yourself. Um, but uh, I, we're thinking to kind of like before we relocate, maybe do one more year here because we've uh, had two years in this house and I think maybe the three year mark unless... The market really drops out. Hopefully, we could get one more year out and and then see where we're at. Uh, the market has definitely been going up. We shall see if it can maintain that because it, it didn't go up in the uh, in the way that we thought. Um, it's still going up, so that's fine. But you know, we were like, man, if we buy into this house and it goes crazy up, then we'll just sell it because that's really the only way to get uh, dollar dollar bills for. A piece of real estate you know what I'm saying because uh, you know you could do that you know you could do that two one and a half to three and a half percent uh, every year forever and that that does add up that's for sure but um, you know if you get some kind of crazy nonsense where it's doing 30 percent every year it's like whoa you know when do you sell you know what I'm saying? But uh, basically, like, if uh, if we could double our money, we probably would have just been like, screw it, out of here. Because um, I don't know where else you're going to get. Where else are you going to get a hundred grand or something, you know, and just be like, that's in the pocket. Let's see. Uh, Alice KH has got to go. Well, have a good night. You'd be like, I don't know. I can't think of a good night song right now. Sorry. I was going to sing about something. And then, you know, I didn't get one. So today's show, let's address the topic of today's show before we get too far down the line here. Because the next thing you know, there's going to be a whole bunch of comments on this video that people are like, man, you didn't get to the video part soon enough. Well, it's been 35 minutes. I feel like that's Certainly long enough for the peeps who've been waiting around, right? <laughs> to get to the video part. Man, did you see me change the ISO setting on the camera? Hold on, let me restart this again. I'm going to see if you guys can see it. Here's the beginning of the video. Oh, maybe a little. That's that's too exposed. Too exposed. Oh, let's bring it down. Let's bring it down just a bit. Um, and then where's my, um, that's brightness. Ooh, yeah, bringing it down. Let's go like this. Yeah, there we go. All right, so today's video, uh, topic thing at the top, what does it say? Water changes in regards to a planted aquarium. How important are they? Now, one of the reasons I bring that up is because guess what? Guess what hokey nonsense I was up to today? I was doing Water Change Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? Does it get cheesier than Water Change Wednesday? <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get it. It has like a rhyme and a rhythm 
to it. I literally don't ever want to do a water change on Wednesdays. Uh, I really like, prefer to do them um, on the weekend just because it, uh, you know, I'm not under the pressure of like doing a show and filming stuff and being doing this and getting things organized and emailing people back and blah, 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 blah like all that kind of stuff. Like I don't have that, uh, all of the work stuff that I got to do on the weekend. So I think it's a good time, uh, to do a little water changes on the weekends. Now, um, somebody asked me a while ago, they were, because they mentioned, uh, they had seen on, uh, LR Brett's channel that the 240, I was trying to run it without water changes and boy, howdy, did I do, I did real well for about, uh, whew, where was I? I was somewhere over the three month mark before things just started doing the like, Oh, Oh no. Oh no. And then it just slowly went on the decline. And then it was like, yeah, I pushed my luck. I'll admit it. I pushed my luck. I pushed it too far and it didn't work out that, that well. What is it with this thing over here? Hold on. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know. Um, I had pushed it too far and it was an issue. It was an issue. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm, I'm not like resetting the 240, but I'm going to definitely, I'm, I, I have acquired myself some cool new driftwood and some more, uh, some different substrate. I'm going to be pulling a portion of the substrate out of there, doing a swap out and all that kind of stuff. So I haven't been, uh, doing too many videos on the, on the 240 at this point because I'm getting everything staged up and ready to go. Uh, so I'll be able to film it when, uh, that goes down and then, uh, people will be like, oh, wow. You did all that stuff. And I'll be like, yeah, check it out. I videotaped it too. So you could watch it with your eyeballs and hear sounds. Um, so, um, yeah, I finally had to break down and start doing some water changes. Of course, the things that, uh, the things that had gone wrong started to rebound from, uh, busting all those big water changes and stuff and getting that tank back, uh, getting it back to ground zero. Uh, my water here is really soft. Uh, well, it's not crazy soft. It's like six, eight, you know, uh, but there's not a lot to it cause it's really clean. Cause I'm out here in Western Washington. Most of it is glacial, you know, it's melt from the, sorry, not glacial. It's a uh, melt from the snowpack every year. So, uh, the mountains here get, uh, I don't know. I think it compacts into, about 20 feet of snow every year. I think that sounds about right. It's like 180 inches up to 260 inch base, basically, uh, which is a lot of snow. Uh, that's how deep it gets up in the mountains here. And then that water melts over the year, gets held in reservoirs. And then that's our main sources of drinking water. There's a bunch of reservoirs out here. It's not like there's just one, uh, but almost all of it's snow melts. So there isn't a ton of stuff in it except for at certain points in time in the year when things are flooding and uh, there's some changes in the, the, um, the basic, well, basically like what's getting washed down from the hills and stuff like that. It does make a, a few changes here and there, but it's nothing super drastic. It doesn't make any of these kind of crazy changes. So I'm pretty lucky in that aspect that uh, we do have pretty, you know, I think last time I checked the TDS, it was like 28. So it wasn't even into triple digits, you know, uh, it does, uh, it does have a little bit of chlorine, a little bit of chloramine cause it is treated and I'll get chloramines in the springtime. So right about now is when I'm getting a little bit of chloramine, uh, because they're, they're, um, they flush the, so the water department will flush that through the system, uh, in order to now decalcify is not correct, but it's, to, but it's, a lot similar to decalcification. It's like they're trying to knock some of the minerals um, and uh, whatever nonsense builds up inside the pipes. Apparently that the chloramines does a great job for that. So they will actually bust that through the spring to kind of knock things loose. I mean, that's what it said in their pamphlet. That seems to be the case of what they're doing. And uh, I have read in more than more than just a few places that that's a pretty common practice in the U S. So I'm like, I'm pretty confident that they weren't making up a goofy story. And, um, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, there was a, a lot of 
confirmation, I guess. JH Aquatics says, I'm tired, just got in from Dallas, stayed longer, came back with 11 new species of plants and a beta splendens. Well, I'm glad to hear you're all the way back in the Virgin Islands, brother. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, Sarpy JK says, hi, what kind is the tall red alternant there that's renekii uh, but it's you know it's renekii and that's the standard cat size uh that's the standard kind it will grow and grow and grow and keep growing taller and taller um yeah, it grows up out of the water even in this thing is this tank right here is 24 inches tall so it's a full two feet tall it'll grow right up out of the water and just pretty much up into the sky. I mean, you know, uh, I've had some of it grow up and out and get burned by the lights because that's just right next to the light, you know. Um, but I've had some of it grow up and out and just kind of like, where are you going, buddy? You know, <laughs> like, it'll just keep going. Uh, but it does, um, if you do try to grow it up in the air, it does get, it gets floppy and breaks itself off. So don't, I would recommend to not really try that because it doesn't really do a great job with, um, uh, you know, growing up super tall, immersed up in the air, you know? <clears throat> hoo Ooh, here's a good question. Joshua Carey says, when adding aqua soil to an established 10-gallon tank, how do you safely do water changes to balance out the leaching ammonia? Uh, I had a couple of pounds at once and lost some fish. Was doing 30% change every three days. Um... If you're getting leaching ammonia from aqua soil and it's just staying as ammonia, uh, sounds like you don't have a cycle going on your tank because you should have a nitrogen cycle going. But I would, uh, before I was going to add aqua, you know, any kind of aqua soil to a small tank, like a 10 gallon tank, uh, I would up the filtration. You know, basically, I would up the bio load that you can handle. So more biomedia and stuff like that so that uh, it will be able to handle that. It's sort of like adding more fish. You know, just that little bit of ammonia should be getting processed by the filtration. Um, nitrogen cycle should be in effect. You know, ammonia uh, changes into nitrite, which the nitrite changes into nitrate. Then the plants eat the nitrate. So... And then we'd be like, it's the circle of life. And then you go like, Hakuna Matata. Right? Hakuna Matata. You know what's crazy is I'm not supposed to be yelling and screaming because I think the baby is sleeping or something. But I can't wait for the new studio because I'm soundproofing the new studio and I'll be able to yell as much as I want. You know what I mean. Uh, JH says, I missed you being with the group. Hope to catch up next time. I assume that's to me, and I appreciate it, bro. Um, hopefully, we can catch up next time, too. I, It just costs prohibitive for me to go, man. It just costs way too much money uh, to go on those trips, and I got way too many projects that need to be paid for. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I'd love to, to go down to uh, Texas and, like, film some stuff or whatever, but it just is really expensive to go to conventions and – like, I get it. It's awesome to be able to see people like, um, and I want to, uh, hold on Ira and, oh man, hold on. I'm going to check. Hold on a second. I just got this totally wrong. Hold on a minute. Let me see. Ira. Here we go. So Ira and I can't remember um, his wife's name. Where where did they go? Annette. Okay. God, I had a total brain fart there. Couldn't remember Annette's name. Now I feel like a jerk. But like Ira and Annette. Some of my favorite people, um, they're from South Jersey. I got, uh, you know, they're, they watch the channel, listen to the show, that kind of stuff. Uh, having met them is monumental to me. They were awesome. They were great. And that's just an example of uh, a lot of the great people I've been able to meet. But I, you know, it's just one of those things. Like we want to keep doing projects and want to fund them and stuff like that. And, you know, I could either go to a convention 
that even like JH, you know, Joseph there is, uh, went to and filmed, you know, and I don't think there's a big return for most of the people that watch this show or watch this channel. If they're like, I'm going to watch Joel's video of Aquashella and it's like, well, yeah, but you already seen all the other videos from the Aquashella where it's like, I could have stayed home and worked on some of the projects and made some of the videos that will hopefully help some people out. You know, a good, uh, and, uh, you know, I also think that like, you know, even just doing today's show where we talk about water changes and think about, uh, some of our water chemistry and things, you know, I think it's important that people are, are taking these things into consideration because you can get all the parts and put them together and you know, you'll have some pretty good success. Uh, but to follow like a longer track record of success, you know, you're going to want to be doing some water testing, figure out what's going on and, uh, you know, working with your system so that, you know, you, you know, you don't get a crazy ammonia spike and then what to do with a big ammonia spike. Um, you know, chances are, a lot of people haven't tested their tap water in a really long time, you know, and it is a good idea to go to go test your tap water to see what's happening because you go like, oh man, I'm having this crazy ammonia spike and do a water change. There could be ammonia coming from your tap. Um, you know, here they do the chloramine, uh, they do a chloramine dump into the system. So to, to do, to clean the pipes a little bit, but, um, you know, part of that is, is that you will end up seeing a little bit of ammonia and whatnot, um, you know, just from the reaction that's in there. And you'll also see kind of crazy pH because one of the things that they have to do is, you know, raise the pH artificially way up so that the chloramine doesn't get ruined. Um, because otherwise chloramine doesn't work. If you have really low pH, chloramine doesn't activate properly. So they have to get it up to like 8.6 artificially so that it will work as it goes down the pipes and stuff. Um, you know, that's a perfect example of that was when uh, I was down in San Francisco with Zenzo and, uh, he was like, man, I do not know what's going on with my water here. And, uh, you know, it's like, okay, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's happening. Do a water test. We noticed that the pH is super high. Um, it wouldn't necessarily gas off, but if you add a dechlorinator to it and left it overnight, then the pH would completely balance back out. And it's like, okay, that's, you know, you start to put those little puzzle pieces together and you realize like, ah, the chloramines in here are pretty high and they're artificially raising the pH. So when he goes to do his water changes, it's like, oh, you better make sure that you have your dechlorinator in there um, and go, you know, so you have your dechlorinator in there. Otherwise your pH is going to be all out of whack and it's not going to balance back out. So, uh, which is a pretty simple remedy of something that you should have been doing anyhow. Um, you know, so that's kind of one of those things. Uh, Ram Phonics says, I was thinking of switching to safe, but it doesn't help with slime coat or detoxing metals. Um, it does work pretty well for detoxing metals. Um, it does the same thing that Prime does. Uh, the slime coat is sort of nonsense, realistically. If you got healthy fish, they're going to have a healthy slime coat. They're just going to do it themselves, you know, like... That's just how it goes. Um, and, and it is just kind of nonsense with the slime coat thing. I don't want to argue with people about it, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> like, um, wouldn't worry too much about it. Super, uh, Super Saiyan. Whoa. Vegeta. Super Saiyan Vegeta's here. Oh, respect. Uh, I was going to ask a question, but I'm too tired and forgot the question. So from the UK, I bid you all a good night. Well, I wouldn't even expect a Super Saiyan to be going to sleep. You know what I mean? You just be staying awake, powering up. Still don't understand why in Dragon Ball Z, do they start out with brown hair or black hair and brown eyes, and then they go Saiyan and they, they get whiter and then they have blonde hair and blue eyes. Makes no sense to me. So a bunch of people have tried to explain it to me. So don't worry. Feel free to have your theories. Regardless of the amount of theories I've heard, I still don't understand it. <laughs> it makes no sense. Um, so the the one thing that's a little bit different from safe versus prime is that you just you do have to be a little careful with overdosing safe 
Um, don't go super crazy with it. Uh, one of the good ways to utilize safe would just be to let, like in my fish room, if I'm going to do a bunch of water changes, I'll get a larger amount and I'll mix that into some, uh, some clean water. And then I'll be able to measure that deal. Um, and then just boof, 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 dump it all in there and voila, kind of done. Uh, because I have bigger systems, it's not that big of a deal because, um, you know, normally I do instead of like the eighth of a teaspoon that they say to use, I'm pretty much normally using a teaspoon. So, um, not that big of a deal, but don't go super crazy with safe. That's the only thing that's a little bit different. Whereas prime, you can just dump prime in there all day long and, uh, you'll be 99% okay. Um, we used to have to do a ton, a ton, a ton of prime on, uh, the saltwater fish when they would land from, uh, being imported. So, uh, okay. So water change with plants and you just exchange my pH problem. Yep. Um, yeah, you should be doing water changes with plants, even though you can get away with it. I, um, like I said, I've had success to get up to about six months to get up to about a year on, uh, some other kind of weird systems, but, um, and, uh, it is something that it does work. You know, it is something that you could do to, to try and I think it's worth doing as an experiment. If it's something that you really want to do and try and do that and skip the water changes, but with a planted tank, here's the upside. You only have to do a water change like once a month instead of once a week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks. I, you know, I find that, you know, a 30%, 40% water change is completely adequate once a month, um, which is great, you know, and that is one of the great things. Not only do you get to enjoy the beautiful aquariums, you know, with beautiful plants and crazy little shrimps and all this kind of stuff going on, I actually have to do less water moving maintenance, which I, if I could finish my automatic water changing system, <laughs> I a hundred percent would be stoked for that. Uh, but considering I have to build a big old pond and stuff in order to do that, it's going to be a while, you guys, it's going to be a little while before I can really, uh, hammer into that. Uh, somebody asked a question back here that I wanted to get to, um, Gareth Doyle added something. Oddball Aquatics. Oddball Aquatics says, love what you do, dude, and how real you is. Well, thank you. I was a real dude. I'm a real human. Like, as far as I know. You know. You know what I mean. As far as I know, I'm a real human. Uh, Bob S. says, hello, Corvus. I'm wondering what best plant to run in a sump thinking hornwort because it grows like crazy and fits in any space um honestly the pogostem and stellatus octopus has been the most effective plant to run in the sump it grows immersed <laughs> like you think it grows wild while it's underwater grow it immersed and you will be like oh my god my nitrates everything is just dropping to the floor and you realize it's because that pogo stemmen is pulling everything out of the water. And I will 100% tell you guys, um, I think people with like really big cichlid tanks should be using pogo stemmen in a sump because that would take the hurt off of them so much, so much for sure. Uh, some people were asking about easy green. How do I know how much easy green to dose? You're going to test your nitrates. You know what I'm saying? You want to test your nitrates. Um, let me make a link here for you. So if people don't know what Easy Green is, uh, or if you haven't bought Easy Green, I will remind you guys that uh, the Aquarium Co-op is who makes Easy Green. It's the easiest. What happened to my chat window? Get back here. Um, it is. It's in the name. It is the easiest fertilizer to use. I use Easy Green and I use Easy Iron. Those are the two fertilizers I use now. I've done the EI method. I've made my own fertilizers. I've mixed stuff up. I've done dry fertilizers. I've done all that stuff. Monumental waste of time, honestly, in my opinion. If you're a super nerd and you want to nerd out and you want to, um, you want to get some specific plants, 
to do specific things because you're specifically trying to do a specific thing, by all means, make your own, um, make your own crazy fertilizer mixes and do all that kind of stuff. But, uh, don't, don't, don't bother if you're like me and you've got a ton of different plants in a tank and you have awesome Fluval 3.0 lights on there and you run a little bit of CO2, easy iron, easy green, boom. You ain't got to go crazy. You can test for your nitrates, figure out where your nitrate level is at because if you add easy green, your nitrate level is going to go up. If the easy green is being eaten, your nitrate level is going to go down. That's the real easy way to explain it to you. So let's say you had 40 parts per million easy green, and, or uh, sorry, 40 parts per million at nitrate at the beginning of the day. At the end of the day, after the light cycle, probably about two hours after the lights have gone out and stuff like that, test your nitrates again. See where they're at. Ooh, maybe they dropped to 30. Okay. All right. That's cool. Then the next day, you get up in the morning, do a quick nitrate test, see what's going on. Okay, we're still at 30. Cool. Then you let a whole nother day go by, test it when you come home again. Oh, we're down to 20. Hmm. So you can start to really figure out a pattern of, oh, every day I'm going to drop 10 parts per million in nitrate. Then you can start adding a little bit up to get back to that. You don't really want to go over 100. <clears throat> Honestly, I shoot for 80 in my tanks. Um, the systems I'm... I'm kind of fine tuning the systems at uh, Aquarium Co-op. I kind of tuned them to my settings. And let me tell you something like the water sprite and things like that are growing like crazy. So I need to kind of dial it back a little bit. Like maybe you wanted a little more conservative growth. Um, you put it down about 40 or 30 parts per million, stuff like that. And just kind of set it right around there. No, don't go too crazy. And, um, you know, if you add a little bit and it goes up to 60, just kind of let it drop back down. Maybe the next time you just go up to 50. But you can go kind of bonkers and go up to 100. Um, you do kind of run that risk of, uh, you know, algae bloom and green water and stuff like that. You might end up, uh, you might end up with a goldfish tank. But uh, let me get you a link for the pogo stem and um, let me see if I can, um, where's my thing? Let me, I wonder if I got it here. Uh, darn it. This will take a second, guys. I'm I want to get, uh, I want to get the link. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, and there's one thing I would remind you guys. Uh, if you check this link, go over and, um, look at the prices on, um, Corey's plants because he has lowered them again. <clears throat> Captain Smarty Pants over there figured out. I talked to him yesterday. He's like, I'm bringing it, I'm bringing the prices down more. He's bringing the prices down more. So go over there, check the prices on stuff. There's a link right there. Like, you know, they're an affiliate sponsor. So full disclosure, if you buy stuff through my affiliate link, it says that I sent you and I get a little bit of income towards hopefully the maker space, which is what I... I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be the, the bomb brass. As I heard on someone's video the other day, that made me laugh. Someone said the bomb. And I was like, is it 1996? Is that what's happening right now? Uh, and uh, now I've been making fun of it. And now apparently I am saying it, which is ridiculous. So I apologize for, th th for saying the bomb. <laughs> uh I'm a special guy sometimes. I'm a special guy sometimes. Ooh, my lady Vicky Toria sent me an email. And, of course, Amazon wants to know if, it, if the filter material I bought was good. All right, let me get back to these questions here. Now that I got some links, um, somebody was... Uh, who was it who was asking about the Pogo Stemmen? Um, where did it go? There we go. Tyler Clinkscales was asking, uh, how do I spell that? There's a link right there in the chat. It'll take you straight to Pogostem and Stellatus Octopus. Um, so prices have come down. 
your guy Corey is just fighting to get the prices down. Somebody was asking me why there isn't a sale. It's because the prices are as low as they could possibly go. So he's doing the best that he can. Um, and I mentioned this on Monday's show. I realized that almost everybody is just drop shipping the plants that they're sending out to people. You know? Which infuriates me. I mean, I don't know. Infuriates too much. That's too much. I just think it's shady. I think it's garbage. I think it's a garbage move. And I, I bought some plants recently. Um, and that's what they did to me. They basically just bought them from a wholesaler. Turned around and stuck them in the mail. And basically said they were from them. So, you know. I will say another good reason for you guys to order from the aquarium co-op. I know personally those plants land there. He's holding on to them. They ship every day. It's super fast. It's insane. The prices are low. So good luck. Um, night flight says you said test nitrates, but what is about right when dosing? So, um, you get the one pump per 10 gallon on the easy green. That's basically what it is. So, uh, I forget what the parts per million are because I normally dose by the milliliters into much larger systems. So, uh, like on my 240 is about 300 gallons altogether. I do about seven milliliters a, a day um, when I remember. But sometimes I forget and it drops back down. So, let's think of what the math is on that because it's not... Because I'm not doing 30 pumps. I'm doing about a half and a half. So I do about a quarter of the dosing that you would normally do. So about a quarter of the dosing is what I'm doing on the 240 and this 150 right here. Uh, Joshua Carey says, is liquid CO2 a hoax? No, it is not a hoax. It actually is just... Um, I think people are confused about what CO2 is. It's carbon dioxide, so you have... Two oxygen, one carbon molecules create a carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide for people out there that think they're going to get poisoned by it. It's very difficult for you to get to get carbon dioxide poisoning. Very, very difficult. <coughs> carbon monoxide will just kill you and you'll just die. Carbon dioxide, you'll be like, but it's crazy crazy difficult to get carbon dioxide poisoning um but you've got the two oxygen and you've got the one carbon what plants are going to do th through the photosynthetic process they're essentially gar gathering energy from the light which is essentially air quotes the sun in this situation the sun was brought to you by fluval um so like it's going to take that energy and energy and it's going to separate the carbon from those two oxygen molecules. It's going to take that carbon and combine it with something else like nitrogen, right? To help start grow its cell structure. It's going to grow. Then it's going to release that extra oxygen, right? It's going to re release that extra oxygen because it don't need it no more. There you go. That's kind of the quick and dirty. Um, that's kind of the quick and dirty. And one of the reasons I like to use Easy Green, uh, Night Flight says, I brought mine up around 20 parts per million nitrates using KNO3, which is possible, but you want to have the micro and macro nutrients, all the other little jammies that are in there. Um, you want to try and get all those in there too. And I'm not going to go into a long diatribe on what's in there because I want to try and answer some more of these questions. Uh, drop shipping is why I typically buy plants from the co-op. Yes, that is why I would recommend people to buy plants from the co-op. Uh, somebody mentioned that um, $4.99 for Water Sprite right now. And I will tell you, uh, Jungle Val is $4.99 and Water Sprite is $4.99, which is crazy. It was up about twice that price before. Uh, it's definitely come down. And I'll tell you, it's super good quality. I'd get the water sprite. I can guarantee you the water sprite is dope. Order it right the F now. I would. Got two full tanks of it right now. And uh, I know that price will probably go back up once they don't have two giant tanks full of it. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, dude buys in bulk, holds on to it, and then when it comes time to sell it, we can sell it at a much lower price because it's healthy. It's already there. We can fill the orders right away, and that honestly is admirable. I think it's just an admirable way to run a business, 100%. Randy says, I like the crinum calamistratum at the cope, at the cope, at the coop. Uh, but they sell out fast. Yes, it does. Um, plants and stuff like that do grow. They sell out fast at the co-op. And here's the deal. They actually <coughs> tell you when they're sold out. Most places don't. Most places tell you after the fact because they don't even have anything on hand. So what they'll do is they'll take your order. Then they'll place your order with the wholesaler. The wholesaler sends them stuff. Wholesalers are renowned for shorting. So, like, let's say you ordered 100 items. They might just send 60 items and be like, yeah, we just don't have any of those other ones. But here you go. Here's 60 stuff. <laughs> here's 60 stuffs. And, uh, yeah. So. And then and then you get the email. Oh, wait, we're out of this. Uh, you're out now? Five days later? Four days later? Three days later? Ridiculous. Um, YouTube dat... YouTube dat boy... <laughs> Hey, Joel, how about the effects of temperatures on plants? I have a discus tank that has dwarf sag carpet developing, and the temp is typically 84 degrees. Uh, I'd like to add some mid ground, mid and background plants. Um, I am always reticent to try and recall temperatures on plants. Uh, but needless to say, most of my plants have... Um, Oh my God, somebody ordered something from the co-op. It sent me an email. It's been a long time since I've seen one of those. <laughs> uh, what is this nonsense? Oh. Oh, Ricardo, you accidentally got deleted. Oh, how do I un... How do I un... Oh, Ricardo, sorry about that. Like, you accidentally were right next to a, a comment that needed to get deleted. But uh, he's asking, is it best to plant the water spray or float? You can do either. So uh, let's get back to where I, what I was talking about, though. Um, sorry, we had somebody dropping some nonsense in the uh, chat there. <clears throat> nonsense. Uh, so I'm always reticent to, like, tell people stuff temperature and whatnot because i always have that written down and i'm always just terrible about it um and i have to reference my notes and stuff all the time but needless to say this tank right here is between 78 and 80 degrees so most of these plants can hang right about 80 84 degrees is sort of the cusp anything that's like 86 anything above that you gotta make sure gotta 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 make sure um, that it's going to be a warmer water plant that it can actually handle that. Uh, most plants, uh, can do 72, 74 for sure. Almost every plant can do that. Almost every plant can handle, um, 74, you know, that's just, just kind of the sweet spot where, you know, maybe they're not the happiest, but they'll just, they'll just, they'll still be there. You know what I mean? Uh, not Nola Jane Fish Rich. <laughs> it says, don't forget to hit the like button. That's right, guys. I got to remind you to hit the like button. Um, or we forget to hit the like button. And then the next thing you know, we have like 20 likes and, you know, 2,000 views on a video. And it's like, what's going on here? You know, people forget to hit the like button. It makes it look like I bought views, which I do not. And I didn't. And I never have. I actually considered buying subscribers like five years ago five, six, seven years ago, something like that. I was like, man, I wonder if I just buy like a hundred thousand subscribers, I would look really cool. And then people would think I was cool. And then I realized y'all would know that I ain't that cool. <laughs> Regardless of how many subscribers I had, you guys would all know like, oh, this guy ain't that cool. He's just hanging out with his weird beard and baby nonsense and rambling on. <laughs> Which is good. Uh, Bentley says, I've asked more times than I'd like to admit to just grow a ton of moss for the co-op, but I'm kind of anti-moss. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bentley and I, we're probably going to do a moss project out in the the forest of Endor. If you all have ever 
been to Star Wars before. The Forest. Uh, let's see. When I have a tank, I have nothing on the bottom but sucker fish to keep it clean and try and remove all the poop. I think I'll have angelfish. I don't know. Doesn't really seem like a question, but that sounds odd. I don't know why you would do that. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to catch up with some of these questions. Chat kind of scrolled on by. Melissa says, I don't know about your tank, but I tossed a few handfuls of crushed coral in the back of that tank. It is a good idea if you guys have pretty soft water like I do. Um, throw a little baggie of crushed coral. I, I normally have it in the sump, so you guys don't normally see it. Um... Oh, maybe I should highlight that. Maybe I should do a little video on that. Oh, I do have a video on that coming up fairly soon. It's the first two chambers of my sump. The follow-up from the back end. You know what I'm saying? Because I did the video on the back end of the sump. The front end of the sump is coming up soon. Uh, I'm drilling a hole in a tank, though, so I need to uh, wait till I'm done. Uh, wait till I have that part of the video made. So I can be like, oh, my Um DK fish hooks, aqua team. So, oh, what would you do if that tank showed size, signs of calcium lacking and do wonder shells work? Wonder shells do work. I love adding wonder shell to my aquarium. Sometimes I don't have wonder shell. And one thing I do have an abundance of is crushed coral. <laughs> um, so wonder shell is, I would say, higher up on the list. But the thing, the three things that I do amend would probably be wonder shell is part of it. Um, or crushed coral, those two, uh, and catapa leaves in the sump and sometimes like birch pine cones, stuff like that. And extra driftwood. Those would be the main three things that I kind of amend the water in just sort of, uh, have it down in the sump kind of deal. Wonder shell is the best, but I always forget to pick them up and I don't necessarily ever have them on hand. You know, lumpy dog says, dude, what fish can I breed and sell for big dollars so I can be rich like Kobe Jack? Um, you could uh, breed the YouTube videos if you want to be rich like Kobe Jack and then start up a business like 10 years ago um, and then be doing really good work and then you'll just have money <laughs> yeah pretty much I think that's pretty much the way to do it yeah I think that's how you I think that's how you get it done as it were um, I do want to let people know that, um, uh Oh, Randy Reed sent me a message. <gasps> Randy sent me a message from Aquarius podcast. All right. Hold on guys. Let me see what this is. I hope it's good news. Probably something broke. Let's see. I'm going to read it first. Let me see. Well, I can't tell you guys what that is, so never mind. I thought it was going to be something funny, but it's not. And Randy doesn't even know that I'm live right now. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Hello, you're live with the internet. Boot. Uh, hold on. I'm I'm gonna message him back here. Do 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 Let's see. Uh Brett Della is wondering, do you use test strips for your nitrates? Uh no. No, I don't. Uh I can link you the kit. If you guys are wondering what kit I use, it is right here. It's brought to you by API, which I always forget what API stands for. Uh, the API master, master test kits for the masters. <laughs> masters, right? You guys know what I'm saying? Uh, sorry. I got a little bit weird there. My apologies. Uh, let me get my text copy. See, check this out. You go right here to Amazon and you get yourself the API master test kit it comes prime. It's the number one bestseller in aquarium test kits. I can't even imagine if there's another one. 
Uh, I use that kit in conjunction with the GH and KH when I'm trying to figure out GH and KH, which is kind of rare. I don't use them that often. So, um, but I will pretty much order just a new one every six months or something like that. Uh, master test kit is 20 bucks. Uh, even, even how much testing I do, it has a tendency to last that long. Um, it just really is kind of one of those things that, uh, it's the best test kit around. It works the best. Yes. It's a pain. It's not as easy as the strips. Feel free to use the strips. If you like Corey has really good strips that actually do work on, um, on aquarium co-op and I've tested them against the liquid kits and they have been pretty if if not if not 100 percent accurate they've been pretty darn close so I, I i'm not upset with the results on the test strips um i just maybe i'm just old school but i'm like man the liquid kit is much more accurate you get a much better reading in my opinion i could be wrong um but it's just you know kind of by my opinion is like better safe with something that I know is, is pretty accurate and just keep going that way. Uh, but, um, I don't think there's a problem with having both, you know, and do the test strips during the week when you're super busy with your work week, you know, uh, you're like super busy with your work week and you're like, man, I ain't got time for this nonsense. I can't be breaking this all out, but a test strip would mean that you would test instead of not testing. Now that's a good deal. That's a good deal as far as I'm concerned. Maybe do the liquid test kit on the weekend um, and do the test strips during the week. That might be a good deal because it does not take that long to realistically test with the liquid test kits. I mean, considering I can test the water probably 100 times in a day when um, if I'm out in the field, like testing a system to see what's going on with things. Um it shouldn't be that big of a deal for you guys to do one tank, right? Um, Joshua Carey says, I love the late night plant propagation vids. Can I expect more or were you just doing pilots and have plans on fish care vids? Um, I don't normally do a lot of fish care videos. So um, I'm like a niche of a niche of a niche, right? Something like that. It's like... <laughs> It's like YouTube's a niche compared to whatever. And then within the niche is a weirdo and then fish tanks and then planted fish tank. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't even understand how to, how to explain it, but niche within a niche within a niche or whatever. Uh, I don't do a ton of fish care videos, uh, but I do a lot of plant care videos, how to set up uh, planted aquariums, follow through on your ecosystem. Uh, the, I will continue to do more late night videos and plant care video stuff. I will keep doing that, do more highlight plant videos and stuff. And even if I do get to the point where it's like, oh man, I did like 400 of, I did like every plant I could possibly find or think of or locate on the earth planet or whatever. Um, I will just start over again and be like, man, I learned something about Rotala this last year. And here's the thing that worked out good for me, you know? Julie Hewey says test strips have been used in the medical field for years. Yes. Individual test strips have been used in the medical field for years. You don't have a bottle of like a hundred of them, right? The, the top keeps getting open and closed and getting cross contaminated. Um, I think one thing I could definitely tell you guys about is cross contamination is a huge deal um, with stuff like that. So that can definitely be a problem. And, you know, I, I come from, Liquid tests, mainly because of the pool guys, man. Pool guys and reef guys over many, many years. Like, that's where API, like, cut their teeth is, like, testing a reef. I mean, here's the thing. You don't see reef guys using test strips. You know? If you're talking about, you know, $30,000 worth of coral and you're just like, oh, yeah, it's fine. You know? Um, you know, reef guys are setting up 800 to $2,000 apex systems to test their water on a regular basis. And then you use a liquid test kit to calibrate 
that system, which costs more than the API freshwater kit just to do one of them. Um, so that's kind of a big deal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so if you just start to think about stuff like that, um, you know, the re reef guys won't leave it up to just a test strip. Um, it's just, you know, they got a lot of money on the line and stuff like that. So I, I just kind of stick with that. I don't, like I said, I don't think test strips are, um, completely bad or anything like that. But, um, I think it's realistic that if, you know, people with a lot of stuff on the line are using uh, liquid kits, it's just kind of the better way to go. Uh, Kathy B likes the strips. Anything uh, that needs more accuracy, I'm not interested in keeping. <laughs> this is my hobby, not my job. That is a good point. That is a good point that hadn't crossed my mind. But, um, you know, I, I feel like if I have a shrimp line that I'm really trying to take care of, and, you know, I saw a dead shrimp earlier today, and it stressed me the F out. Um, some of those shrimp that I imported have not done fantastically converting. Uh, from the breeder to here, you know, so that's kind of the struggle struggles real, but Hey, that's life. Do, 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 do. So Julie says again, multiple test strips are used in the medical field daily. Y yes. I'm not denying that individual test strips are used on a regular basis. Um, okay. It's turned into some kind of weird situation where I guess maybe we're just arguing about whether people like test strips or not. Feel free to use them all day, all, all day and all night. Use whatever you like. I like test. I like liquid kits because they're more accurate. I don't know. Uh, Matthew DiCarlo says, I have a 29 gallon with a male beta named Alpha residing in it and nothing else wanted to try plants out. Sorry, it's hard to read this. Residing in it and nothing else. Wanted to try plants out for the first time. Any recommendations on plants and substrate with a regular LED light? Um, yeah, there's tons of plants. Um, got a 29 gallon? Feel free. Any of the cryptocryne? Any Anubius? Any Chainsword? Any uh, Valsneria? Any, you know... I'd have to have a, like a little bit of a better idea um, in regards to uh, what exactly you were trying to accomplish, you know, as far as plants wise or anything like that. Um, you know, you could do tiger lotus, you could do pretty much anything in that uh, in that case. Oh, Barbara Jackson is here. Says I finally time to catch a live stream. Hi everyone. Oh man, Barbara just got here. I feel like I, I feel like I shouldn't wrap up the show at this point <clears throat> people are coming and going and i don't blame you because actually uh i think aquarium co-op just he's probably got his live chat open he's gonna go live at five so you guys should go over there um you know if you guys do go over there and he convinces you to buy a bunch of stuff buy through my affiliate link <laughs> he's got jokes um Let's see. Oh, Julie. Yeah, you're not arguing. I know. I'm not arguing with you either. It's all good. And I hope I don't sound like I was being argumentative or whatnot. Like, I feel free. Like, if people like strips, use the strips. If you like liquid, use the liquid. If you like using both, then go for it. Uh, green blue just can't handle it. I don't know who green blue is, but just get out of here. See you later. All you've been talking about is, you know, pee and nonsense. Whatever. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Trying to find... Somebody was asking back here. James Reet says, I ordered two Hygrophila Pinnatophyta from the co-op on Monday, uh, and they're all sold now. Yeah. The Pinnatophyta does sell out super fast, and I know that there wasn't a ton there when, uh, like, last time I was up there. There wasn't, like, a ton uh, there wasn't just like a giant tank full of them. So, uh, Matthew DeCarlo says, I'm looking for a bushy type feel to it and carpeting. Um, yeah, I would definitely go with Crips then. I think if you want really low maintenance, really medium light, um, the Cryptocrine is probably going to be the best bet for you at this point. I would go with, uh, any of the kind of 
the crypts that will kind of bush and they will fill in the whole entire area. Um, you know, obviously the carpet will be a little bit taller, but it will give you that bushy look and it will give you that whole green and um, they send out a lot of runners and you won't be losing your mind. Um, you know, you won't be losing your mind with taking care of a bunch of crypts and they'll grow in pretty good and they'll do really well for you. So I, that'd probably go that way. Uh, let's see. Honestly, I think whatever test method you use, just do it consistently so you can see if something changes. Yeah, do it consistently and write it down, guys. Figure out a way to write it down. You know, I was talking about this uh, at the Oregon uh, Fish Club, the Willamette Valley Fish Club when I was there. Uh, I don't know. Who else? Would, I think Kathy is here from there. Uh, I think she's in the chat right now. But, um, you know, I would 100% recommend that people figure out a way to document it. Now, a cool way to do it would be you could write it down like on a whiteboard. Um, I have a little bit, I have these little whiteboards that I try to write things down on. I'm going to, um, I'm going to mount some new little whiteboards next to stuff. Um, and something that's kind of cool is they have an app now on your phone that you can actually like you know, take a picture or something and it'll convert it into a text file. So that's something that could be like really cool that you could just save it and then save the text file, um, to something to your network or something like throw it into your uh, computer at some point in time and then save those up. And you could really see like, as things are changing and stuff like that and, uh, really be able to track it and, you know, tracking, getting that track record of knowing what's going on is really going to be crazy helpful, uh, over time. Matthew says, uh, done using your link to get it. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, Bob S is wondering what my favorite plant is. And have you ever planted a tank solid with it? Ooh, uh, man, the favorite, the favorite plant thing is super rough because it really comes and goes. It really comes and goes like, uh, that Ludwigia arcuata is high up on the list right now uh this hra right here this rotala that you guys are getting to see where's my arrow oh man i almost i almost missed you guys on the arrow today so this hra is rotala h apostrophe r a i don't rotala h ra and i'm probably saying it wrong but there it is um this is a plant I've been looking for for a while. Kevin hooked me up with some when I went down to Oregon, getting it planted in here. Pretty zazzed that it converted really well. Um, that one's super high up there right now. And uh, definitely got some uh, some other plants like high up on the list. It's, it's, it's pretty rough to try and figure out like one. Uh, but I have done some individual um, tanks in the past. I used to do a ton of nano tanks. So I used to have a ton of... Uh, the um, like eight gallon cubes. It's like one foot by one foot by one foot cube, the 12 inch, 12 inch, 12 inch cubes. I used to have a ton of those. So it was very common back then that I'd be uh, doing stuff like that where I just have an individual plant. All right. I probably made some people irate or people are leaving so that they can get ready because it's 430. People be tripping, heading out. It's about 40 people just left. So, hey, we're back down to 100. So I'm going to remind anybody to hit that like button and all that stuff because whatever internet nonsense um and i want to say give a big shout out to everybody on patreon um your guys support is monumental and i 100 percent appreciate it big time uh if you aren't on the patreon and you want to help support this show you can hit you can hit up patreon you could be as little as a dollar a month it could be like an npr kind of thing or you could buy things buy things through affiliate links, if that's what you like. If you shop at Amazon, we're an Amazon affiliate. If you shop at Aquarium Co-op, hey, Aquarium Co-op affiliate. Hey, all that kind of stuff. Uh, or we have that new feature with the join button on here on YouTube. If you don't feel like leaving the YouTube platform and you want to stay here, you want to show your support uh, with a bright green name and stuff like that in the chat, uh, along with custom emojis and new badges and things like that that are coming along. Uh, we'll be having a weekend live stream here real soon where you, the only people that can chat, that's a members only. That's a members only. And that is coming up very, 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 very soon. 
Well, I got to get out of here because I got to start gearing up because my birthday is in about two weeks and uh, less than two weeks. So I got to start getting ready. I got to put on my pants and everything. You know what I mean? It's going to be crazy. Uh, but I appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, I definitely appreciate. Uh, but I definitely appreciate everybody who's been supporting and, and showing up. Uh, love you guys. Have a great day. Fantastic Wednesday. Uh, don't forget to go check out. Corey's going to be live in about a half an hour. And I'll see you all on the flippy flop, flippy flop, live.